Do you want to use the new e-shift features for your electric bike with Shimano DI2 shifting? Here's how to update your e-bike and the derailleur. To be able to use the e-shift features for your Bosch e-bike, you not only need to update your entire e-bike via the Flow app, but also the Shimano DI2 derailleur itself, whether it's a Qs, XT or XTR. First of all, make sure that your bike is running the latest Bosch software, as this ensures that all functions can communicate properly. It is only with both updates installed that the new shifting features can work together seamlessly. The easiest way to do this is uh, via the eBike Flow app by pairing your bike there and then updating the bike. Starting from Flow app version 1.30, the new eShift functions for DI2 are available. In the next step, you still need to update the derailleur on your cassette. It requires firmware version 4.4.1 or newer. To do this, you can use the Shimano eTube project app. You can find it in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. To link your derailleur with the system, the first thing you will need, if you haven't already done so, is an account, which you can easily create in just a few steps. Once that is set up, you need to put your derailleur into pairing mode. This works using the small button you'll find at the bottom of the derailleur. Hold it down until the indicator LED starts blinking blue. Now using the Shimano app on your phone, you can add the derailleur by tapping the big plus sign. After a few seconds, it will also appear in the overview. By selecting register, you can then pair everything with the app. You will now be asked again if you want to change the passkey. This is basically the password for your derailleur when it needs to communicate with other components. You can also do this later and skip it for now. That's always my suggestion. By default, the passkey remains as four zeros. If the connection was successful, it will now show the components you want to add to the app. In our case, that's the derailleur and the shifter. Now we also have the option to give the whole thing a name. I'm just going to call it eShift Cues for now and also take a photo so that if I have several drivetrains saved, I can clearly identify them. And by clicking the button to register as a new bike, we can then add everything. The wording is a bit confusing because we're not really adding an entire bike. But that's indeed the right button to connect the derailleur to the Shimano eTube project app. After you've paired everything with the eTube project app, you can use the tab at the top left to check for the latest updates and upgrades. Here, all your currently connected components are displayed and it also shows whether there's a new update available. For the derailleur, we can already see that there's a new update. For the shifter, we don't see that at first glance. To reconnect it with the app initially, you simply need to press any button on the shifter to check whether a new software update is available. In this case now, there isn't. By using the Update All button, you can now update the derailleur and also the shifter if necessary, ensuring that both components are running the latest firmware. From our experience, all of this takes quite a while with Shimano, so the update process can easily take 10 to 15 minutes. Just make sure that the screen doesn't turn off or the connection isn't interrupted during this time. Once the update is complete, you'll get a notification and you're basically ready to use the eShift function. To use it, now disconnect the components from the app using the disconnect button. After that, you can switch off the bike using the standard on off button to exit the diagnostic tool screen and start the bike as usual. Once the bike has been restarted, you may already notice a new small symbol on your display, the icon indicating that the automatic mode has been selected. This shows that the new shifting mode is now active. This can be either M, M plus or A. You can switch between the different modes using the third shift button on your shifter. You have up shift and down shift with the large shift paddles and a third button as well. This is how you switch between the modes. M simply stands for manual. Here, the system automation does nothing at all. Instead, you shift up and down as usual using the shifters. M plus means that you still have complete control when you're pedaling, allowing you to make the various gear changes yourself. Only when you are not pedaling, so basically when you are at a standstill, can the system change gears via the eShift automatic roll shift function. For example, when you are rolling up to a traffic light or riding on a trail and slowing down slightly so that the correct gear is already engaged. Lastly, letter A, quite self-explanatory, is the automatic mode. Once you have selected it, you can practically put the shifter aside as the system takes care of all the shifting automatically. For the automatic mode, it is of course essential to tell your system which cadence you would like to ride with. 
To set this up, you have two distinct and different options available. The easiest and most straightforward way to do this is via the Bosch eBike Flow app. Switch to the right screen there and in the settings menu at the bottom right, you can precisely set your preferred cadence. You might need to scroll either left or right to find the specific cadence settings. Here you can choose anywhere from, I believe, 40 to 100. That's revolutions per minute, meaning crank revolutions per minute. A lower value means you don't have to pedal much and the motor already provides a lot of support. Or with a high cadence, you have to pedal quite fast and the motor will only provide strong support later. It's simply a matter of settings and you can gain some experience and adjust it as you like. Alternatively, if you don't have the Flow app with you right now, you can also do all of this through the display settings. To do this, use the LED remote or the Purion 200. Press and hold the settings button until you enter the context menu, then swipe right or left once, and there you can also set the cadence. Then close it again to finish, and in this way, you've set the cadence. You can also adjust it quickly while riding or on the go if you notice, okay, maybe I need five or 10 more revolutions. That's really practical. If at first you feel like the auto shift isn't really working properly or somehow doesn't function while the bike is on the work stand, then I recommend just taking a short test ride. We've found that it always takes a couple of minutes or just a short distance for the system to learn a bit so that you can then use the auto shift function. That's a little tip on the side in case it doesn't work at first on the workbench or in the stand. Also, if you've already downloaded the Shimano eTube project app, you'll find more options there to optimize your derailleur. Because with it, you can not only update to the latest software, which is always useful, so it's a good idea to check from time to time if there's a new update, but you also have the option to make various adjustments. For example, you can fine-tune the derailleur to the left or right, and you can also change the settings for the shifter. If you want to change the assignment of the pre-installed buttons, for instance, if you want to swap the upshift and downshift buttons, you can easily do that through the eTube project app as well. If you're already feeling a bit envious of everyone who has a DI2 electronic shifting system on their bike, don't worry. In one of our upcoming videos, we'll also be covering how you can retrofit a DI2 electronic shifting system to your e-bike. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel because then you definitely won't miss it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments now and we'd also really appreciate a like on the video.